Georgia. Brilliant to see you all here um, this evening and a huge thanks to Alicia for getting us off to a good start. She's one woman for some woman, I tell you that. She convinced the Yard Collier to come here to or campaign for in the election, so well, well done, Alicia. I see there's uh, some, I'm voting Alicia t-shirts in, in the audience. The Dirty Girls are wearing them. But a shameless promotion of an excellent MP, and rightly so. Uh, listen, it's fantastic that you've all um, travelled to be here, what promises to be uh, a great Ardesh. We've been busy a uh, few days ahead, and I look forward to all the conversation and the debates that we're going to embark, embark upon. Can I say a special word also of welcome to the McGuinness clan? I can see Martin's family here. Delighted that you are here with us again <laughs> this evening. As Alicia says, Martin lives on in our hearts, in our deeds, in our actions, and we carry him with us everywhere we go, so um, his memory will live strong in the Republican movement. Aharja, we are embarking on a decade of opportunity. This is a defining moment in the history of Ireland, and the decisions that we make now will shape the future direction of our country for the next generation. We have lived a century apart, and partition has failed us all. It has reinforced segregation, division and inequality. And the Brexit that's being imposed on us today serves to further that division and we can't allow that. So our mission to secure a better Ireland in a better Europe is a serious one. And we need to bring all the people of this country together. We face many challenges, but we also face huge opportunities. Sinn Féin's Republican vision is about giving hope for the future. Hope for a future which allows our children and our grandchildren to grow up in a better society. Hope for a society where compassion, prosperity and social justice prevail. But that future is being obstructed by the DUP and the Tory Brexit. The British politics and the British political system is in meltdown. Their reckless Brexit that we didn't vote for is being forced upon us by a government that we didn't vote for, by a Westminster system that will never, ever represent our interests. A stark choice is opening up between the narrow-looking vision of Brexit Britain and then the open and inclusive vision of a new Ireland. We're being dragged out of the EU and into a little Englander nightmare. The DUP have saddled up to the Tories and they've treated the people here with contempt. And that's caused huge anger and provoked a response that's never been seen before. And people from all traditions have united in saying that enough is enough to the DUP and the Tories and the Brexiteers. Business and industry leaders have been out front. They've been very loud. They've been very clear. And they have been saying no hard border, no tariffs, and no threat to our economy and to our peace process. Over the past three years, I have led a pro-Remain alliance. And we have spoken for the majority of people in the North. We have put the best interests of people and businesses first. And we have shown, we have demonstrated that a new kind of politics is possible in which progressive parties come together in common ground for, and that is all a good thing. The next test of that politics is going to be the Westminster election. And Sinn Féin's message in this election is clear. Back in 2017, we made a pledge to the people. We said we would use our influence and our political strength where it counts, taking our case to Capitol Hill, to 10 Downing Street, to the Dáil and to Brussels. We did that. We said that we would ensure that our special and unique circumstances were understood across Europe, and we achieved that. We said that the DUP would have no storm and veto, and we secured that. We said we would protect the Good Friday Agreement, the all island economy, and prevent a hard border, and delegates, we delivered that. One or two isolated MPs will not make a difference. 35 SMP MPs couldn't make a difference. But we have shown what does work is our approach outside of Westminster. Brexit has vindicated the Republican analysis that we must turn our back on Westminster. Our interests will never, ever be served there. All of these things that we have achieved are the least worst outcome. 
We have successfully defended Ireland's interests. But there's no good Brexit. Ultimately, the solution to the Brexit mess is Irish unity. And on Thursday, the 12th of December, the people will have an opportunity to reject Brexit, reject the DUP and to reject Westminster. Sinn Féin is asking the public to support and to re-elect Derry's MP, Alicia McCallion, Francie Malloy, <laughs> Mickey Brady, Paul Maskey, Michelle Gilderneu, Orla Begley and Chris Hazard. And joining, and joining that magnificent seven will be John Finucane as the MP for North Belfast. This is the people's opportunity to stop the Brexit architect, Nigel Dodds. John Fernucan represents the Good Friday Agreement generation. A human rights lawyer like his father Pat before him. A mayor who's working on behalf of all of the people of the city. As the MP for North Belfast, John Fernucan is the future. So this is the election of a generation. And for many, it's the election of a lifetime. There's a conversation now underway across this island and it's an unstoppable conversation and it's a conversation like I'm sure many of you here have never witnessed before. It's no longer a question of if, it's a question of when the unity referendum will be held. In April 2017, the EU made a very important declaration. They said that in the event of Irish reunification, the North would automatically rejoin the EU with the rest of Ireland. So for many people, from all traditions, all backgrounds, Irish unity is now seen as the best way for them to stay within the EU. Many of those of a British or unionist identity are now considering the merits of reunification. Not to become Republicans, but to be remain as Europeans. And this is backed up by the unprecedented numbers of people that are applying for Irish passports. People are acting in their own interests and are coming to the conclusion that their interests are best served in a new Ireland that is part of the EU. Sinn Féin remains fully invested and committed to the Good Friday Agreement. The commitment to a referendum on Irish unity is within that agreement, and we cannot, and no one can, cherry pick it. The agreement also requires an assembly, an assembly that works for everyone. The current political impasse is unsustainable and it's unacceptable. Three years later, after the RHI scandal brought the assembly down, People deserve and people demand a functioning government and they deserve genuine power sharing. An agreement was reached back in February of 2018. However, the DUP regrettably walked off the pitch. That's also not a sustainable position. The delivery of rights cannot be avoided. At the start of the incoming year, after years of campaigning, same-sex couples will be able to marry the person they love in the North. The injustice of women being criminalised has ended and there is now a consultation underway which Sinn Féin will help to shape to provide access to compassionate health care for all women. <laughs> After years of waiting, the historical institutional abuse victims can see some light in their journey for redress. We should be legislating for these things in the Assembly. I stand ready to form a credible executive. A new assembly and a new kind of politics in the new year is what I am working towards. For a full decade now, the Tories, with the support of the DUP, have stripped our public services of investment. If the executive is to be credible, then it must deliver on issues such as public sector pay, safe staffing levels in the health service, economic policies that deliver prosperity for all and that invest in rural communities and a welfare mitigation package that protects people from Tory austerity. To be credible, all of the outstanding issues must be dealt with, in an Irish, including an Irish Language Act and reform of the Petition of Concern. It must also deal with the legacy of the past. The British Government's refusal to deal properly with the legacy issues is hindering reconciliation and wider political progress. Victims and survivors have had to wait for far too long for the access to truth and justice. The Stormont House Agreement must be implemented immediately. There must be no special treatment for British soldiers who brought arms to this country and murdered Irish citizens. There can be no... <laughs> the 
there can be no amnesties for state forces. Everyone should be equal before the law. We live in politically uncertain times. However, I'm certain of two things. Firstly, that a referendum on Irish unity is coming. And secondly, that the foundations for a new Ireland are being laid. Taoiseach Leo Varadkar can't ignore this reality. I encourage the Irish government to listen and to convene a forum that facilitates these discussions. And I want to, at this hour, Desh, commend the Ireland's Future Initiative, who published over 1,000 signatures calling on the Taoiseach to establish such a forum. Leo, you need to catch up because the people and society are miles ahead of you. You said to Northern Nationalists would never be left behind. It seems, Leo, they're leaving you behind. <laughs> Universities are now exploring what the constitutional future looks like, and businesses are planning and investing on an all-island basis. Demographic shifts are occurring, so it's time for us all to be part of the conversation. The Irish government needs to avoid the mistake that the British government made with the Brexit referendum without proper planning. The people of this island have spent a century apart. Unifying Ireland through peaceful means isn't a new idea, but it's the big idea of our time, and more and more people are realising that. The opportunity now exists over this decade to bring people together, to build a future together, a better future, a prosperous economy, decent jobs, world-class public services, a zero-carbon society, and crucially, an Irish National Health Service that provides healthcare free at the point of delivery. <laughs> Over the past number of elections, the political unionist majority has gone. This may create fears for some people about the future, but we will not replace one system of discrimination with another. There must be space created for mature dialogue where nobody feels that they're being asked to surrender their identity or their allegiance. As we approach the centenary of partition, let's not fight the battles of the past. Let's look to the future. Let's present our vision for a new and agreed Ireland. Let's address the concerns of those who are fearful of change. We want reunification, not just for Republicans, but for everyone who shares this island. This is not about victories. This is about something better for us all. For many people, the frustration, impatience and urgency for change is growing. If Brexit demonstrates anything, it's that the British Parliament has never and will never act in our interests. Only a national parliament in Ireland will do so. So this is a time for big ideas, inclusive conversations, ambitious plans and generosity. Comrades, we are entering a decade of opportunity where the freedom to choose our own future will be decided by the people on this island alone. It is a time for hope. It's a time to bring people together in harmony and friendship. It's a time to transform this country. And it is a time to unite all the people who share this island and seize what is the opportunity of a lifetime. Gurmila Mayor.